and welcome back. Uh, last video we were talking about the, the start of World War II, uh, the invasion of Poland as well as the Winter War. We also talked a little about uh, this concept called the Phony War. Is um, Basically for the, the eight months between October 1939, which is when the invasion of Poland ended, to May 1940, uh, very, very little fighting happened in Europe or Africa. Um, the, the European theater was very, very dead. Which is very interesting because you would think that once um, Germany invaded Poland, they would just keep going and going and going. But they stopped for eight months. Uh, but what happened directly after this phony war in May of 1940, you have the invasion of France. Um, and the invasion of France is, is one of the major um, issues, one of the major battles in the beginning of the war. Uh, in May 1940, uh, France... Holland and the Netherlands were invaded by Nazi forces using the, the Schleifen plan. So you can see here, uh, the, the Schleifen plan is is this big swing across, across see this is France down here, uh, the Belgium, uh, Belgium was up here, uh, the Netherlands is far a little bit, well it's actually up here. So Germany's right here, and you see they just kind of swept around. Now, now France had France had a, a defense line against Germany had a very strong defense line it was called the Maginot line it was a, a huge complex fortification uh, from about let's see where did it start from about right down here you got the first and second armies of France that are right down here and the Maginot line moves all the way up it move, moves all the way up here the Maginot line quite amazing you can see right where all these things attack, where all those little blue lines attack from. These, that's the Maginot Line. Well, up here, this is the Ardennes Forest. Right down, this is the Ardennes Forest. So what, what France wanted to do was they wanted to build a line all the way from uh, the, southern, the southern parts of France where, where Germany first starts touching. You see Germany's right here. And this river is kind of like the, the general boundary of, of Germany. It's a little, a little harder to see. But basically, um, they wanted to build a line all the way from down here in southern France all the way north, even to the ocean they wanted to do. But because of issues with Belgium and, and in this giant forest right here, it was, was going to be quite a lot of money to simply put this line all the way through to the ocean so basically what the French said is well why don't we just build a defense line to the, the forest they're not gonna go through the forest it is one of the major forests of of Europe well the Germans went through the forest and France was quickly quickly taken over within about a, a month and a half and and the French forces along the Maginot line were crushed because of the the German flank behind the line and as you could see too the um the French, the French artillery and the and the French uh, tanks, they were not they were not necessarily up to snuff compared to their their German their German neighbors. So this became a huge issue as well. And and, and here you could see a picture. This is this is Hitler in Paris. He's he's <laughs> right behind, right in front of the the Eiffel Tower. And, and this is kind of like this is this is the, probably the the big major concerning event for a lot of of like especially Britain. And, and the United States to the, the Hitler is not to be trifled with. He he is willing to take whatever he needs um, to feel like the German people are, are are the best. And what happened was is after this invasion, after the invasion of France, um, a lot of the the French forces in the western part and southern part of France and, and all around Paris, when they heard that the, the Germans were coming, they they ran away. <laughs> it was a very simple action. And and what happened was, is you have this. It's called the the, the flight of Dunkirk. And and what happened was is that the British and French forces, in, including um, Charles de Gaulle, this guy right down here, it's Charles de Gaulle. We were talking about him earlier one of the main leaders of France. He, he joined the flight of Dunkirk. And, and this was, it's actually a really amazing story. And you can kind of see the, the red is the Germans coming in from the, from the east, coming to, to take the, and right, right here, you can see it's kind of, this is Calais. And Calais is one of the closest cities to um, Britain. If, if we were to draw a map, Britain would be, Britain would be uh, up here by the, by the quay. And 
they're very close right there at with the British with uh, the English Channel and Dunkirk is right here and and you can see the the movement of the troops the French troops and the the British troops they swung around and in this it's very harrowing what happened because it's almost like as the Germans were encompassing the the fleeing French and British forces uh, civilian boats and and on all these people with different speedboats and things like that and, and other and other civilian craft actually were, were transporting soldiers out to Britain. So, the, I mean, a very harrowing flight of Dunkirk. And many civilian French and British risked their lives and property to save the soldiers. So it just tells you how important it was for the British and the French to, to save the forces. And a lot of the, the forces left at Dunkirk. It was, it was actually a, a big, successful retreat. Um, months later, however, what happens is the, the German Luftwaffe actually start bombing Britain. And here's an awesome video down here. So when you get a chance, uh, watch this video right here. So the, the Germans started a brutal air campaign against Dunkirk. From 1940 to 1941, Luftwaffe bombers in V-2 rockets. And uh, here, are the, here are the V-2 rockets over here. That's a V-2 rocket. These were made by the Germans. They were one of the, the first um, civilizations to discover rocketry and really master it. And these were very frightening for... Um, for the British as they were landing on cities and bombs were coming overhead because it was, it was like a missile. It was like getting hit with a missile. It was frightening, frightening stuff. Um, the German aircraft actually didn't have good enough range. One of the things that would, what would happen is, and we'll like take a look at this map down here, and so you can see the English Channel is right here. This is Calais and Dunkirk to give you a better ish, idea of where Dunkirk is. Dunkirk is in relate, relate, uh, relation to England. So you have these enemy attacking forces basically coming from Calais and Dunkirk and, and a little south in France, attacking uh, port cities and especially London and Essex, the big targets of, of the Luftwaffe. But the Germans made a fatal mistake in their, their air raids. And, and what happened was is they really did focus on a fear aspect. They, they were trying to, I mean, they were trying to bomb military targets, but they were really trying to take out major population centers and um, inspire fear, essentially. They, I mean, Germany was trying to kick the British out. The British Empire is, was huge at the time, and, and even that little bit of uh, little, that little bit of the English Channel, there really is a large separation between an invading force and a um, a, a, a basically a, a raiding force, which is what the Luftwaffe did. They just kind of raided the cities. Um, also, a huge issue was the range of the Luftwaffe. The Luftwaffe didn't really have um, comparable ranges. Of, of bombing tactics they had to refuel a lot uh, they were they weren't exactly the most reliable craft unlike what we'll see in the future with american uh b-17 flying fortresses and things like that and the british spitfire fighter planes here these were very effective units in world war ii uh, the british of course upgraded their before this they had essentially biplanes but the british spitfire provided a really excellent resistance against the the german luftwaffe bombing planes and basically the air raid stopped around october October 31st in 1940 but now we're left with this issue of France still and in and, and France France basically gets completely taken over by the Germans and actually we'll take a look at this map this is very interesting um, so you can see the division of France basically happened into zones it was the armistice of June 40th that was signed between the French and the the Germans and what happened was is that the majority of Paris was left in this occupied zone. This, uh, now, German forces and, and a German governor was set up in Paris, and, and Hitler had direct control over that, essentially, in all of these areas, of course, being the closest to Britain and things. Um, also, some of them were uh, just kind of annexed back into Germany and uh, back into um, Italian supervision and things like that, demilitarized zones over here. But the other issue is this, um, it's called the Free Zone, which is basically uh, French nationals, if they didn't want to be um, taken, or they didn't want to be ruled over by German, a German governor, they can move south where Lyon is and, and 
but there's Marseille and Vichy and they called it Vichy France and it was a separate country essentially from the rest of France this was basically a, a free French government that was ruled over by a um, a republic system that was controlled by the Nazis as well so this separation doesn't really mean that the, you know, the French had full say here, but of course there was a lot more coordination with French resistance in Vichy, France, than in occupied in the occupied area. And but basically they they functioned as the same sort of Nazi state as well, which was I mean frightening. Think about this: that your country gets taken over and then gets split into so many different ways. And these were all people that were French no more than you know a year ago. So this is a huge issue in. in <laughs> during this time period of, of what Germany does to France at the time, uh, the system was really ripe with corruption as well. You know, people paying off Nazi guards and, and SS officers and the, even head government officials being highly tied into the, the searching of, for Jews and things like that. And if you're in the occupied part of France, of course, it, Jewish people, were you, you were just searched. You didn't have any political freedoms or anything or, or any civil rights. So... Um, it was pretty bad anywhere you went, actually. So, so that's what happens <laughs> to France. And now we're stuck in this time period where we're getting to the end of 1940, and and Germany starts itching for a little bit more. And the next time we're going to talk about uh, the Soviet Union, we'll talk about Pearl Harbor and a few other things. But uh, we'll see. We'll we'll talk about that later. And I'll see you in the next video.